What's going on everybody? It's Conti here with another video. How to add dramatic text to a video project in DaVinci Resolve 16. To import your video file, go to File, Import File and Import Media. With your imported file inside your media pool, left click on the thumbnail, hold your mouse button down and drag this to the timeline. Let go of your left mouse button once this video file is in place. Left click on the Fusion window at the bottom of your DaVinci Resolve interface. Ensure that the Nodes window on your screen is visible and clear. Drag any other unnecessary nearby windows out of the way. For example, the Keyframes window on the side here by left clicking, holding down and moving to the right. And should two nodes, such as media in one, not all be visible on screen at present, what we can do is left click on one, hold the mouse button down and drag this to the side. So as you can see here, they are much closer. Left click once on this small dark panel with the red and blue rectangles in order to help bring these two nodes to view. My intention is to insert some dramatic animated text underneath the channel logo as in the example shown. In order to achieve this in your Fusion window, first of all, left click on the Media 1 node to the left. You can tell that this is selected after I've left clicked once and the node is highlighted with a red outline. Hold in Shift and press Space on your keyboard. Inside the Select Tool window which appears, type in Text Plus. Left click on this once and go to Add. You can also find shortcuts for similar tools with the toolbar above the node window. Alternatively, if you can't find them up here, use the shift and space option instead to open up the select tool search window. Left click on the text one node. Underneath inspector for text one, you should see a box appearing underneath text labeled styled text. Inside style text, we want to type in the text that we want to have appear on our video project. In this case here, I'm going to use the channel name as an example. If I track my mouse cursor to the left underneath the preview window, I can left click on the border for this particular section, hold the mouse button down and drag this towards the bottom so that my video preview becomes bigger and clearer. Hold control on your keyboard command if you're a Mac user and roll your scroll button of your mouse device upwards in order to zoom in and still pressing control down roll the scroll button downwards in order to zoom back out. By letting go of control I can use the scroll button to also shift up and down in my preview window. I would like the text to appear underneath the channel logo so if I roll the scroll button on my mouse downwards, I can now see the space which appears underneath the logo and where I wish to position the text. I'm going to maintain the font choice of Open Sans and the style of Bold to emphasize the dramatic nature of my text. I will also keep the text color as white. Double click on the box if you wish to change the font color by left clicking on the shade that you wish before pressing OK. I'm going to click cancel here as I do not wish to change the font color. The color picker icon next to your color box enables you to select a color from your interface. If I left click on this and hold my mouse button down and drag my mouse cursor to the video preview, I can drag my mouse cursor over a particular shade which I wish to use for the color of my font also. And this should appear inside the text color properties. Let go of your left mouse button once you have made the appropriate selection. I'm going to press Ctrl and Z as I wish for my text to be white. If I scroll down the text properties underneath Inspector, we should be able to find a size setting just below color. At present, the size of my text is 0.08. If I increase this slightly by left clicking on the gray circle and dragging this to the right, to 0.23, which you can also type in manually by double left clicking and entering the number in this particular box here. 
use the tracking option to separate the characters in your text message more by dragging to the right and bringing the characters back closer together again by dragging the gray circle of this particular setting to the left. I'm going to keep the tracking set to 1.0. If I had multiple lines of text written on my screen, I can separate these more by increasing the line spacing or reducing them by, again, like what we did with tracking, dragging to the left to reduce the amount of space between each line. Global in and out determines where on your particular video clip the text will appear also. I want my text to appear across the entire video clip here with my channel logo and therefore I will keep the frame numbers underneath this particular grey bar the same. The zero represents the first keyframe at the start of my video clip and 119 represents the final frame which you can also see on the timeline in Fusion using the red indicator. If I didn't want my text to appear at the first 10 frames though for example what I will do is drag this grey circle on the left next to in and out to the right to number 10 so that frames 0 to 9 do not feature the text as you can see here. If I drag my red indicator across the timeline to the first 10 seconds you can see that the text does not appear at all until frame number 10. For now I'm going to maintain global in as 0 and global out as 119. In order to reposition the text so that it is below the logo I need to go to left click on the layout button. Center X and Y determines the location on the screen where the text will appear. At present it is located at X 0.5 and Y 0.5. On the video project preview there should be a green circle with two red arrows placed in the middle of the text. If I left click on the box in between these two arrows Hold my mouse button down and drag this downwards. Note how that the center X and Y coordinates underneath layout change as we drag these down. I wish for the text to remain in the middle, so I will keep this at 0.5. And the Y coordinate has been updated after I manually moved the text on screen. As you can see in my preview, I wish for the text to increase in size as the video plays. In order to achieve this, I need to go to the transform icon underneath inspector. Since I want the text to be at its smallest size at the very first frame of this video sequence, I will make sure that my red indicator on the fusion timeline is hovering over frame zero. By left clicking, holding the mouse button down and dragging this to the beginning of my timeline on the left here. Underneath the video preview, I can confirm that the red indicator is at the first frame, zero. Inside the transform properties, if we scroll down below transform, rotation and shear, you should see size at the bottom of your inspector window. If I increase X, this makes the characters on screen wider. If I increase Y, this increases the vertical size of my text. Press Ctrl and Z to undo. To ensure that the text is at its smallest in this particular video clip here, I'm going to left click on both the diamond symbols next to X and Y under size, which are the keyframes for this particular animation sequence I'm about to create. Going back to my red indicator on the timeline, I'm going to left click on this and drag this to the final slide on my preview timeline. 119. Now what I'm going to do with the size window still open is left click on both of these keyframe diamond symbols once again so that they are both in red as well. And now I'm going to increase the size of both X and Y so that the text is bigger. And also left click and drag on the text box to place it downwards a bit more so that it is not up against the logo symbol itself. Now having increased the size of my letters, 
Note how the space between each character has not been modified and therefore as a result letters inside my video file have overlapped one another. In order to spread the letters out what I need to do is to go back up to the top of my transform window and find the property spacing which is set to 1.0. If I left click on this particular grey circle here next to spacing and drag this to the right you can see now that the space between each of the letters has increased and each character is clearly presented on screen. In order to ensure that this spacing transition occurs in my animation as well, I need to ensure that this visual segment is saved inside my video project as a keyframe. And I will do this by left clicking on the diamond icon next to spacing and now dragging my red indicator back to the start of my video file. I can see that this spacing value of 1.386 has also been applied to the beginning of my video file here. However, the spacing between each of these much smaller characters is excessive and therefore what I'm going to do is reduce the spacing back down to its original value of 1. You can tell what the original value was by the smaller circle underneath the black line next to spacing. If I left click on this little circle once, then the bigger grey circle returns back to its default value. In this second example here of a video project starring Bobby the dog, I have placed text in front of a video file which doesn't just contain one single plain colour, such as black in my first example. And because of some objects in the background behind this text, such as the white cushion here, some of my writing is difficult to read on the preview. If I left click once on the text one node to make sure that this is selected, press shift and space, and go to find soft glow. Glow can also be used as an alternative. For now, I'm going to choose soft glow and click add. This soft glow one node should appear between text one and merge one. Make sure that this is selected by left clicking on it once. Underneath inspector for soft glow one, left click on the arrow next to color scale and you should see four color scaled options appearing. Alpha scale refers to the transparency opacity setting of the glow that appears around your letters. If I increase the red scale here, for example, we should be able to see a red outline appearing around the text. If I decrease the green scale as well, for example, and as you can see on the video preview here, the text stands out better due to the outline around each of the letters and doesn't blend in with the white cushion in the background of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.